Hello guys and welcome to my channel. If today is your first time, I am Barbara Boaje. I create content linked to studying abroad, graduate school admissions, scholarships, and the in-betweens. It will mean a lot to me if you subscribe to my channel and if this content was actually useful to you, do hit the like button. And also, if you are looking at applying to school abroad, um, wherever in the world actually, in Europe or in Canada or in the US, I'm planning to um, roll out content related to all these things. So when you do subscribe, also hit the button so that you get notified as and when I post a video. In the past, I've actually made a video about the DAD scholarship where Emmanuel here with me shared his experience on how he was able to get the DAD scholarship. So for today's episode, he's actually going to take us through the process. So if you plan on applying to the DAD process, you just have to watch to the end and you just follow the procedure. And also have in mind that the deadline is just the end of this month. So you need to be quick if the DAD scholarship is what you want to do. So Manuel, before you start, can you introduce yourself? Then you take us through the process. And thanks for agreeing to do this. You're welcome. Okay, I'm Emmanuel Mensa, a DAD Helmut Schmidt scholarship holder for the year 2020. Yeah, and, and I'm studying my master in governance and public policy in the University of Passau, one of the eight schools under the Helmut Schmidt scholarship program. Okay. Um, thank you, Emmanuel. So if somebody is interested in the program, what is the procedure? Where does one apply to? What do you need? Can you take us through it step by step? Yeah, so with um, the Helmut Schmidt scholarship program, even though DAD has so many other scholarships, the Helmut Schmidt targets just some specific schools and every year the schools and then the courses also changes as well oh, so see. sometimes you might see a document from the past year it's it's possible the following year would have the same schools and the same courses it's also possible they would change the school and then they will change the courses as well so every year there is an application document which talks about the schools the kind of courses they do to let you know as and what you want to do and they even have a brief description of the course and then what it entails so i can share my screen then we go through the schools that would be great this was the document which was released for this year and in case someone wants to have access to it you just type in dad elmut schmidt scholarship 2021 it comes and then you can download it as a pdf file so as we have here, the beginning just talks about the objectives of the program, then the target group, it's mainly people coming from um, developing countries. And also it's sometimes they require that you have some form of career experience in the kind of field you want to study, since it's based on public policy. So maybe some career experience in the field of public policy, it could be an internship you did whilst you were in school. It could also be maybe your national service or maybe some years of work after after school. So down here we Imano, have... For you, what experience did you have with regards to the... Because like when I look at public policy and good governance, I don't know like which job field actually is considered public policy and good governance. Yeah, most of the time you don't actually need a job which is like public policy and good governance, but something which is a bit related. So for me, I I once worked with um, the town and country planning while they were doing the street naming exercise that was in 2016. I was working on, as an assistant to one of the planning officers. Then the following year, I worked with the EPA and I was in the environmental auditing and compliance department where we mostly assess people's um, permits like before you come for an environmental permit you need to first assess if the project you are going to do is safe for the environment and also the field or the place you're actually going to do that thing would is suitable for the kind of project you want to do and sometimes too we 
do compliance to check if you're, you are actually going according to what you are supposed to do based on what is defined in your permit. So that's what I used. And then I did my national service as a research and administrative assistant at the University of Ghana as well. So I used both my internships I did and then my work doing my national service. Yeah, so that was the only working experience I had at the time I was applying. Yeah. And thanks for sharing this. Yeah, so. So in all, just in all, how many years of experience was this? I would say it's more than a year. Oh, okay. But with the, with the working experience, it, it also depends on the schools. Oh, okay. And then some schools would, because it's the school that gives you the nomination. Oh, okay. Then you can apply to DAAD. So some schools would require that you have two years of working experience. Okay. So in some schools too do not actually are not so concerned about your working experience, but it's better if you have the working experience. Yeah. OK, OK, thanks for this. Uh, internship or voluntary work is considered work experience, right? Yeah. Ah, thank you. Yeah, you could continue now. Yes, yeah, so down here we have the schools and then the programs they offer. So this year we had eight schools as well. It's more than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven schools in all just that um, one school is offering two courses. That's, uh, uh, just that one school is offering two courses and that's my university currently. That's University of Pasar, which is offering the Master of Governance and Public Policy and then the Development Studies as well. But during my year of application, the Development Studies was not part of the was not part of the program, but the later I introduced it, that was last year, and then it's also there this year. So here are the courses which you can find in the document as well. And then down here is the various master's program. So it starts with the first school, and in order to apply to the program, because the application process for every school is different, in and under every school's contact they have their own website so you have to ap apply directly on the school's website so if we should take this school for instance if you don't mind i can just share this one try open it so there is a link under every school's contact there is a link which is which is the the website to the program and then there is also a program coordinators number and then the mail as well so to apply, you just come to the link and it opens, uh, it sends you to the school's page. So this is the program in analysis and design of social protection systems. So at the school's page, then you come attention, DAAD scholarship. So if you want to apply, you just follow here. And then it takes you on and on where it gives you the what you need. So here we have the legibility and criteria selection and then so you could see that for here the school actually was demanding of you having at least five months of practical social protection experience. Okay. Then a C1 level English proficiency according to the European framework of reference for languages. But mostly that's, this is one advantage for Ghanaians because we studied in English, we did most of our studies in English. All you need to prove is your English proficiency letter from the school. So you come here and then we have the application process where they tell you what to do via online application. So in the first step, you don't send anything to DAAD, but okay. rather, rather it's the school first, then you go on so the school ask you for yeah so here here are the application documents for this particular school where we have a DAD application form for research grants it's 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 a green form but for this form it's 
it's for can every we see the phone can we yeah. see the phone? yeah oh, yeah this is this is how the form oh, okay. looks like and one thing about this form is it's it's the same form for every DAAD program okay. so down here you could see they have different different programs here Okay. So all what all you have to do is to click on the particular program and it's it's digital, you can fill it online. Okay. But at the end you would have to print it out, attach a passport picture, then you scan, then you sign afterwards, you scan, then you upload as PDF. Okay. So for this for this scholarship, it's just study scholarship for a postgraduate course with relevance to developing countries. So you just click this one. Okay, awesome. And you fill in your details and you continue. So this is where you attach your passport picture. And this form is also used by those applying for PhD as well. Okay. So there's a so there's a portion in the form which asks for your research project. Okay. But since it's just a master's you are applying for, you just ignore and then you just leave it there like that. And then when we come here, it's talking about choose choice of host in university of institution in Germany. That means um, here you can choose just two schools. You can apply to two schools. So here you choose your first choice and then your second choice. But you would have to explain why you made a particular school your first choice and why you made the other your second choice. And that has and that has to all that has to show also in your motivational letter. So in this way, you don't write two motivational letters. You write just one motivational letter explaining why you chose a particular course as your first choice and why you chose a particular course as your second choice and how these two courses are linked. OK, can you give an example? Like, can you show us your motivation letter and how you explain this? Because if, let's say, I chose school A as my first choice and I chose school B as my second choice, I'm going to submit the same a motivation letter to both schools, right? Mm-hmm. But and one, okay. From my end, I chose just one school because okay. I didn't want to go through the stress of, um, let's say, thinking plenty or thinking okay. about okay. how to okay. link these two courses. So I just chose one school and then wrote uh, a motivational letter which is directed towards that particular school and then the course. Okay, but like if you chose two schools, could you give like an example of how you can explain maybe why you chose one school over the other? Do you have any idea of what you could? Yeah, most of the times it's you explain it based on what you actually want to do. Okay. So maybe you can say, um, looking at what you want to do, you chose this school as a first choice school because it gives you the the greater opportunity but nevertheless with a second school you have chosen in case you don't get a place in the first school doing a course with a second school it doesn't mean they are less important for what you want to do but it would also help but you feel the first choice school will help you more as compared to doing a course in the second choice school. so but okay. most of things people don't actually explain why they chose this one as first or second. They just explain why they chose their courses. OK, and, OK. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. OK. And in the forms, is there any interesting thing we should know about the form? Is there like any parts that might have uh, a bit of difficulties for people to feel? Yeah, I think um, sometimes people have problems with degrees held. It's just okay. talking about the first degree you, you have, or maybe if you have more than one bachelor's degree, you can list all. And then here it's ask of the course you studied and then which year you completed. So, you know, in some schools they have their major and then minor. Okay. So if you majored in something and minor in something, you just list the two and then the years could be the same year since it's the same year you completed both courses. Okay. okay. There is secondary school education, which is uh, actually the your SHS, like a senior high school you attend. And then the year, and then here the results, most it's the aggregate you had 
in your wasi. Okay. Yeah, so maybe after putting everything together, maybe you had aggregate 15, aggregate 11, 12. You just put aggregate 11 or 12 there because you actually submit the SHS results as well. You add that. Wow. Certificate. So it's. What if you don't have it? You have to go request for it, I guess. Yeah, it's 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 one of the requirements you need. You need the certificate that gave you admission into a university in the first place. Okay, 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 I get you. Even with myself, before I registered with my school, even though I had the scholarship and everything, I still had to prove that I had a certificate that gave me admission into where I did my first degree before this. So oh, okay. it's, it's really important, yeah. Okay, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, but it's 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 not that because the form is there. You have to. There are some places that if they don't concern you, you just don't fail. Like with okay. a research, with a research project like this, study or research projects in Germany. Mm-hmm. With this, if you put something here, then that means you would have to attach a proposal. Okay. Yeah, so you just don't touch it. You leave it, and then here. They are talking about academic referees. So it's just the one who wrote the recommendation letter for you. Okay. Yeah, you just put their names here. Or if, because some schools ask for two recommendation letters, but in my case, I submitted just one recommendation letter. Okay. Because you requested for just one. So with the two, it's one from your school and then one from where you work. Okay. Then here they ask if you've learned Deutsch before you understand German. It's no or yes. It's yeah. Then does your does your ability to speak German or not influence your selection process? No, 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 no. Okay. They just want to know what you can do, like your abilities. And then there's this side, which ask. Um, yeah other information or remarks which seem important to you in connection with this application so it's just like writing what you know you can do best like describing yourself you know in some people's cvs in the beginning they write who they are what they can do like just writing your abilities and then your qualities yeah what did you write for yours could you share with us what you wrote for yours or you don't remember yeah, I can, I can share. Okay, mine was um, okay. It was I have good research and analytical skills. I'm always motivated in learning new things, and also I'm always interested in finding solutions to every problem and everywhere I find myself. So it was just about basic things I could do and do very well. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Then here, what professional career do you envisage? It's for you, like a career you want to do, what you want to be in future, or what you want to do after this program. So for me, because I am so interested with development policies, I just wrote development policy analyst. And okay. yeah, so it's. Um, so, like for this program, for the DAD, it's more interested in people going into professional field and not into academia. So, like, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. Okay. If if you want to go into academia, it's also allowed because okay. when you go into academia, you end up teaching people. Okay. As an impacting people with what you've learned. Okay. So even in your motiv that that also comes in your motivational letter as well by maybe writing you also look forward in maybe furthering your doing further studies and you mm-hmm. see this as an opportunity to open the way or pave the path for you to do your further studies, maybe PhD, to impact knowledge, to give advices, like this form of consultation to policy developers and stuff so it's yeah, all yeah 
So, so this is all about the form. Okay. Yeah, I would like to. Okay. So you could go back to the university website, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So I'll I'll share it in a bit. Yeah, so we yeah. So we're here. We're on the. This was no, the first. No, no. Ca ca yeah, can we still finish with our university? The university, the first yeah. university we were on. Yeah, this is the first school. Yeah. So we've dealt with the forms. Yeah. What are the other things you need? Okay. So application process. So this is the D. So this was it. This is the form. Okay. Yeah. A research proposal. This is for the university. They are demanding the research proposal. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically university based a research proposal maximum of 800 words so with this if they are asking for this then in the form that means you are going to write the kind of research you want to ad undertake then attach the proposal mm -hmm. to it since they are demanding for it and then even the proposal there is there's a template for the yeah. proposal yeah then yeah okay so it's unloading then we have the hand signed and dated motivation letter. That means after writing your motivation letter, you print, sign, and then write the date. Then you scan and then upload as a PDF. Then unsigned and dated full curriculum vitae, including information about here. Yeah. This but is very interesting. <laughs> it's not supposed to be so much mm. beef, but very um with so much information it, it should be brief but so informed but so yeah so if applicable certificates of employment support relevant professional experience mentioned in your cv wow. by entry evidence so you know sometimes <laughs> some people um forge some intention to do yeah. so this is where it becomes a problem because if you write anything that means you would have to be able to prove it that yeah you actually worked here. So most of the times it's it's just uh, a matter of going to wherever you did the internship. If maybe you didn't get any letter from them, just telling them yeah this is what you want to do and they need a letter. It's just the writing confirming that yeah this guy worked with us from this date to this date and then putting it on a, on a, on a letter head and then start signing it and then that's all. Then we have copy of the recent of the transcript of records, then recent language certificates, which is which you can use your English proficiency letter. Then yeah, got this this is also just one letter of recommendation. So that's just one. So it could be from your uh, it could be from your immediate supervisor or maybe your lecturer but most of the times with this one it's, it's best if you get it from your supervisor at the workplace because since they are they need someone who knows how experienced you are with a supervisor from your work it's it's better then valid passport copy because the only id they recognize as with is our passport so that's the only form of identification. So these are the documents you need. So this is for the first school. Please then, look at the research template, please. Yeah.
Yeah, just that I don't know where it's hiding now, but I'll find it. Okay. Whilst we still look for it, we can look at the application process. Okay. Let me just get this idea. Yeah. Okay. So this is how it looks. Okay. So your research question, relevance of research question, proposed research design and references in literature. So not, not so too much, much, yeah. We just should be able to justify why you want to do this and how you want to go about it. It's, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah, so so this is for here. Then now we look at apply now. Oh yeah. Since now we have all the so it's online application. So you create an account first. So the scholarship program is open to blah, blah, blah. And in the field of social political science and winter semester 2020, 2023. And for those who have already studied, you may check here. Yeah, OK, then. So online application for international students. So let's go. Yeah, so. This is how it looks for the online application. Whilst you go forward, maybe I should I try filling in. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the way. That's the way. Okay. And this place of birth, then it should also match with um, the one you have on your passport. So correspondence address. So okay, let's use Ghana then. Postcode. I've always been finding difficulties with this postcode then for Ghana because so here license tag, which it's only for German applicants. So then your number. Then preferred first name. Let me use here for it. Then email address. Uh, then we move on to the next. So next, choose the country where you obtained your higher secondary school certificate. So, 
And when did you obtain your higher secondary school certificate? So it was 2013. Then I I think you're you muted yourself. Okay, I can't see your screen again. Yeah. May, you've chosen me, you've chosen the team, so you have to go back to your browser. Uh -oh. Yeah, we are here now. Okay, awesome. Completion of university. Yes, yes, UDS. Oh, place of university. Come on. I still see my screen. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay, so name of program. Matriculate, so that's when you completed. What S matriculated when you completed? When you completed, yeah. okay, interesting. Okay, and then total semester zero enrolled. Semesters of leave zero. zero. Date of conferred degree. So the date of conferred degree is basically what you have on your certificate. You know, with with my certificate, even though I completed in July, my certificate, I received my certificate on the 10th of November. That was our graduation, so that was what I had my degree. So that's what you write here. Then. then we come to topic of your thesis. Mm -hmm. write something. Then average grade. So. It's basically what you had over over the what's the over the best grade. Okay. Then further studies in Germany, which is not done, so studies in other other countries than Germany, no. So we just we just move on to next. Then my native or official language is English, yes. In English, yes. This is crazy. Why are they asking for two for results here? Okay. What it's asking for two floor results. That means with this particular school, you need a two floor. Yeah. Yeah, but I we went next, and then it's so next here is where you fill in your your working experience. 
So employer one, employer one, employer two, employer three, then for the sake of time, let me just, let's just move. Okay, we can't move without filling, so. So main tax. So now that we because yeah the requirement was just six months working experience with just one one employment. Oh, yeah. That's okay. yeah one employment. It's okay. So how did you learn about so online? Yeah. yeah you So the TOEFL, you were able to actually go NERS without actually answering that, right? Yeah, because you your native language is English. Was English, okay. Awesome. So what's your motivation to join the program of analysis? Uh, so this is where you you put your letter of motivation, and it should not be two pages. And I do like the fact that they tell you what you have to cover in your motivation letter, so it's also good. Yeah. So the references, as in the, the one, the same person who wrote your recommendation for you. Okay. So, how are you related to this reference provider? Okay. So, even though they require this one recommendation, you have to get yeah. two references. Oh, okay. Nice. At least two references. So one could be the first one actually is the one who wrote the recommendation letter, then the second one is a different person. So, uh, okay, so.
So now, as part of this application, you need to submit a DAD application form. So that was the form we went to. Okay. So now you need all these stuff to upload now. Here you can upload the required documents. Please select the type of document before uploading. So you choose one. So whichever one you, whichever docu of these documents you want to upload, you just select and then you come and yeah, yeah. After all, you have to save, then move to the next one. So let's say you've uploaded all the documents. We go next. Yeah, so here, without without uploading the document, you can't you can't continue. So let me do I have it? Okay, the top of motivation. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it has to be a PDF file. Okay. Have one. Yeah. And also like I realized that there are some parts that are in German. So like for people who can't speak German, what um, what happens? Parts in German. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because like I can see German, like the, the application parts, like I could you know, go down where you had to apply. Like you see uh, data, like that's German, no? Where? The letter of motivation, where there's motivation letter dot PDF. This part is German. The, no, 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 good. Yeah, the yeah. next one, the one by it. Yeah. Yeah, that's selection of data. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's also another issue. Well, I don't know, like, but for like in what I did, like, if I'm applying to schools that don't speak English, it's you can actually download the Google Translate portal into your browser, so it automatically translates every language for you. So. For people who yeah. don't have any bit of German, yeah. that's an option you could explore. Yeah, so I think if you look, I think I'll see on my left hand side, we have everything of the application here. So after you've uploaded all the application documents, I won't go further because I don't have all the I don't have all the application document. So after you've uploaded all the application document, then now the send it's okay for you to just send. After sending, you get a mail to show that to confirm that you've sent it. You sent your your application and you would, you wait for their reply or you wait for their response. So I would say yeah, that is. That is much of the that is um, the majority of the work you have to do is to get all your documents ready, all your motivational letter, your proposal. That's if you are applying to this school, that's where the proposal applies. But if it's a different school, then can we see your motivation letter? Like, can you take us a little bit through your motivation letter? Because one thing I've realized is the motivation letter is a, an area where most people um have a problem with yeah yeah okay so let me just open my motivational letter and i'll shut down Okay, 
so so this this a motivational letter I wrote just recently but it's for a different program actually I did a development planning in a different school yeah and okay what I do is I I try to look for like try to create like a problem or not to create a problem but try to create an introduction or make it a bit interesting before I add my interest or why I would like to apply. So for instance, with this, I just talk a bit about Ghana, where I come from. Then we look at why you think you need, or why you think Ghanaians need someone like you to study that course to help them, or why you think the course will help them. So that's where the problem comes in. And we all know sometimes all these problems are as a result of poor leadership or let's say maybe not so much political will let's say, um, or not so good policies so just use it that way and then try to also say okay so based on this i would also like to I would like to study this in order, in order to also contribute my quota in solving this problem. So then the next, I just added what I did in school, the studies I did and how the studies has prepared me or has equipped me to also contribute my quota or how this studies I did makes me the best candidate for this particular program. So I just mentioned some of the few courses you did, some of the few things you did in relation to the programs. Sometimes you realize whilst in school you do so many things, but not all relates to the program. So with those with those ones, you just put them aside. So you just pick some of the things you did, maybe some form of voluntary works you did in relation to this particular program or to solve issues deal with development staffs and yeah then i moved on to here talking about what the program is going to give me and what i'm going to gain from the program what i want to gain from the program and with this basically i i would say i didn't write all this from my head i went to the program when you go to the program's website it gives you what the program actually entails and at the end of the program what you what you should earn what you should gain or the lessons to learn the skills you gain so i read more of that then also try to fuse it with what i also think about the program so it's basically their own words like what they've written about the program and my own reading, then I just put it together and then do like, um, like join them and then write one concrete motivational letter there. Then in the end, I just like sort of um, saying how good I am and how I think with this, I am best for this program. It's, it's just like writing an application letter where in the conclusion or at the end, you write how good you are. And then based on maybe your experiences, you think this particular program. And most of the times it's good. I just met this was for DA, the Airports. So just, just based on what you are applying. Sometimes some people write a motivational letter without even adding the program they want to read. And I feel it's, it's not so good if you do it that way. Sometimes it's good when you mention the program and then what actually the scholarship is meant for. For instance, the Omut Schmidt is geared towards um, good governance and public policy, like ensuring pu uh, public policy and good governance. So we just add it to the fact that, yeah, this is, do you think you will do this in up under the Omut Schmidt? scholarship for public policy and good governance and everything is going to be 
good. So I think, yeah, that's how I just go about my, it may not be the best motivational letter though, but I, but it took me some time though to put it together. Sometimes, sometimes you, you write if you think you've written everything so good, but you give it to like a peer to do this kind of peer review and yeah, they tell you what to do, what not to do. Sometimes their suggestions look a bit weird, but you try a different person and then, so you are not just supposed to be on your own. Yeah, but at least you give it to someone really true for you. You it's someone who you know is a bit higher than yourself then, or even someone lower because you may never know. I, I agree with you on that point because sometimes you feel like you've, you've done a solid work but you are looking at things just from one point of view so i do agree with you the fact that it's important that you give it to a whole variety of people to read they add a little bit of spice and also one thing that also helps is like at the end of the day a motivation that you should also be able to read it to yourself because sometimes when you are reading your mind moves so fast that you're unable to identify certain mistakes. So sometimes you just have to read it yourself to be able to help identify those mistakes. So yeah, thank you for sharing your motivation letter with, with us. Like we could continue from there. You could look at the other schools, like what does the, the other parts of the application? Yeah, so we go back to the documents then. Yeah, so we are done with the first school. So we move on to, this is Master of Development and Governance, that's from Duisburg Essen. And it's, for this it's just for two semesters. The first one was for four semesters. Okay. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's good we are doing this because for this school, it's a different board game altogether. So this school actually, it's, this is also a different board game altogether where you would with this you would have to okay so new online application for self-finance candidates yeah that's for self-finance candidates then there's that's for the DAD students yeah which is here yeah so with with these people you don't um, you don't do anything in a portal. You have to require documents. So this is what you do. You put all these documents together, and then you scan them into you scan them into one page. Like okay. you scan it into just one a single document, but they need two confidential letters of recommendation. Okay. So let me just open the checklist here. Okay. Then, yeah, so this is, these are the things they need. So you, yeah, so please make sure that your application contains the following documents. So you scan all these documents into one page. And then with the part of the two recommendations, you don't send it, but rather the, those who are doing the, those who are recommending you, or those who are writing the recommendation letters to you, would have to send it to a G, the G, the email address they provide here. Yeah, that, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So with these people, yeah, it's just about scanning all into one and sending it via email. You don't do anything online, like any online filling in of stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that's for this school as well. So I think among all, this is the, this one looks a bit simple, but a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. going to tell a lecturer to send recommendation for you himself, it's, it's some way, but it's, it's, it should work anyway, yeah. Oh yeah, most people actually do it. You just have to inform them. That's not really yeah. a big deal. Just with time and, uh, yeah. Okay, so then, we then go on to the next school since this was simple. 
And I like the fact that for English speakers, it's not compulsory to write the IELTS. I don't know why, but I always assume that was compulsory. Um, do you think if you write the IELTS, it gives you a better chance, or you don't think it makes any difference? Okay. <laughs> this, the IELTS is basically doesn't cause it's just to see how well you are in English. So. Yeah, I get you. Okay. Yeah, so then. This one is Master of Public Policy from the University of Erfurt. Very nice city as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we go here. But one thing, you know, with other scholarship programs, AA, other scholarship programs, you apply all once the same way. But with one thing with this is they all have different ways of application. Mm -hmm. So we have the MPP brochure. Then, yeah, so, and also, in case you have any difficulties in the application, it's just easy to call any of the coordinators to, to help you out. Because mine, for instance, um, I was a bit lazy about it. So I, I had everything ready, but I didn't submit it on time and the day I submitted was a deadline. Wow, okay. Then it didn't even go through. Mm -hmm. So later I sent them a mail that, yeah, I submitted, but I didn't get the mail. And then they were like, oh no, then maybe it's a internet problem. So they had to give me extra three days. Oh, nice. To submit it again. But if it were to be a different program, you, you, you don't even know the coordinator in charge. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have the MPP brochure here. Then we have the admission requirement here. So, yeah. So here we have higher education and choice qualification. That's your was he that's something i'm still i'm still wondering why 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 they need this what is it with yeah college or university degree if you have a master with a duration of at least six semesters six semesters because here and the undergrads do just six semesters as compared to in ghana where we do uh, eight semesters, undergrad to six semesters, that's just three years. Yeah, okay. So these are the admission requirements. I'm just looking at the application procedure, but... And also one thing is, this with this school, even if you want to go on like other Chairman public schools where we have tuition free. This school, you still need to pay for the fees for this particular course. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. So let's do this. trying to look as compared to the other schools where they had the scholarship street yeah so Helmut Schmidt is here so please note that all applications for um, will have to be submitted directly to us via our online application portal so we do so you realize here they says they said no additional application to the DAD is required so here we have our application checklist as well. The DAD application form we filled, the CV or statement of purpose, the diplomas, degree certificates, proof of professional experience. Uh, this is where sometimes some people get it wrong. Sometimes you can just use your national cert service certificate as a proof, or maybe the same 
letter from a company or something you work with to show that yeah you work here yeah and then here you have the proof of english proficiency so either the TOEFL or maybe your english proficiency from your school but one good thing is this school also has other scholarship opportunities that's mm -hmm. the annual stipending program but yeah most of the times it doesn't cover as the much as this okay yeah so we go to their online application portal and we just follow the same process so welcome to our online application please register to proceed with your application for any so first you create an account you create an account with them here by entering your details and you register and then you proceed with your application so with this online it's basically similar to the first one we did that's for the the one we did the first the first one we did that we had to go through the online application uploading and submitting all the documents online yeah so so one advice more i have mostly is before you even start everything it's good to get all these documents down so let's say i want to apply on i want to apply tomorrow so i have to make sure i get all of them down today so when i start tomorrow within like 30 minutes to one hour you are just done then you just submit your application so this is it for the Willy Brandt School of Public Policy for this program as well. It also follows the online, the online portal system. Yeah. Yeah, so this is Otto van Greek University Mad Madkeborg. That's that's a peace and conflict studies. So let's look at what they want and yeah. So who can apply? Yeah. So we also go to the uh, portal. You're still seeing my screen, right? I think for this, we just for the rest of the school, just let's have a look at the documents they require because I'm sure the application process will be similar to the other ones. Yeah, I think that's what I'm even looking for for these people. So applicants for Helmut Schmidt program here. Yeah. So requirements. Yeah, so we have the degree as usual, your English. And then you see for these people, they are saying other language skills are an advantage. So since they've stated it, if you have other language, it could maybe Spanish, French, yeah. Then intended career path after completing of your studies. So you realize with these people, they've actually um, stated what they need in your motivational letter and your personal motivation. So expected benefits when returning to the home country, explanation of the choice of program and place of study, intended focus of study relevant to previous knowledge within your studies so basically they all need just the same thing just that some differs with the number of recommendation letters they want yeah but it's so difficult with this school because they need proof of international experience work or that's of at least three months so this one is a bit limited because if you've never been if you've never worked or studied abroad before then that's yeah. or that's, even out of your country May, yeah. i don't think the international experience has to necessarily do with out of your country because there are like some international companies but i, yeah. I don't really know what the international experience means for but, me i thought it would be maybe with this un and since oh, okay dealing yeah, with 
peace and security. Yeah. 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 So with so, regards to that, I think if people are not sure, you could just like email them and ask them like, what do they mean by an international experience? And they are also asking for proof of social or political engagement. So that's why I always say it's very important that um, you start planning very early. Because if maybe you started looking at this like maybe six months or a year ago, you know that these are the requirements so you can actually work towards that. So now it's no, it's no longer a scare to you because if you want to apply and the deadline is in July and you are now looking at this, it will be, a very, it will be very dicey to get all these documents beforehand. Yeah. yeah. So, so sometimes for me, I actually look at the documents for the, for the previous year and okay. I start together for to apply for the next year exactly yeah, exactly so very easy yeah so i think this one would be a bit limited in a way because how yeah. to get more this proof of social or political engagement <laughs> yeah but just maybe someone has to get it and so I like I like that the third thing. So that's how come it's also important to be taking pictures. Like you go do things, and when you're taking pictures, people are like, "Yeah, too much." But like if you've done these things, and the proof, you could also add a picture, a video of all the things that you've yeah, done. Like sure. I think it would be a very impressive portfolio. Yeah, sure. And for me, I feel the social is much more important than even more than the political. So the social could be just maybe a community something you organized or and it's 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 much much more better even if you are not the one that organized and you even took part in it it's also a proof so and then these people also use the same process they also do not go online like doing the online portal but you merge all the documents into one pdf and then send it to the okay. email okay. okay that's great yeah and i'm trying to get the the letter of recommendation is just one just one letter of recommendation yeah so it's safe that way so uh are we still here Hello? I'm here. Okay. So we move on to the next step then? Yeah. So which is um Which is Master of Management in Nonprofit Organization. I can't Aust see your screen. Yeah. Are we there? Yeah, I'm here, but I can't see your screen. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can now. Like, and I, I like, I like the name of the program. Like, this is something I'd love to do. Actually, I can't see your screen now. Again, it's gone. Yes. Yeah, I can see now. You like the name of the program? Yeah. You like to do this program? Yeah. Oh. Okay, now I have a friend there too. So. Oh, okay. Doing the particular program? Yeah, the same program. But what was the name of the program? In Masters in Nonprofit, Management in Nonprofit or something. Yeah. That's just not Nonprofit organization, yeah. I don't know why it opens everything. 
it may be type n and we can find the name because it's in non profit no like the master program just go down go to the portal and just go to n so click n i don't okay yeah that's it management and non-profit organization application page yeah so how to apply yeah yeah so please send your applications on to via mail too so these people also use the same the same method but let's so now we gratefully welcome here you will have chance to meet some formal scholars okay i like this yeah because it also gives you the opportunity to interact with people how the program is going to yeah be like and all that yeah so i think this uh these people are 2020, 2021. Yeah. Yeah, so let me think these people. Anybody here? Okay. So let's also look at the required document for application. So one thing is all the schools need this DA, the application form. That one is sure. Then they also need the curriculum beta and then this euro pass then sometimes it's really necessary you just click on it yeah, and then yeah. it helps you create the CV yourself so exactly yeah wow. so they need but, yeah but for these people they need the the with the b1 german certificate yeah so you can do it if you are in Ghana. You can do it with the Goethe Institute to get a B1. And yeah, so that's 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 what these people too. And their letter of recommendation is also just one. And you have to put all the documents into one and then send it to this mail. Yeah, so that's that for the school. And let's come to University of Passau. Yeah, one of the beautiful cities in <laughs> Germany. If you say so, if you say so. Yeah, it's it's really small, but we have three three different rivers. It's, oh, that's nice. Yeah, and you can even see from here, you can see the campus. It's, it's really beautiful. <laughs> Just that we are not that many. Okay. So this is this is what pass how. Uh oh. So with pass how, I even have. I even have um a PDF. For okay. Pass yeah, I even have a PDF on how to apply and everything. Okay, and so, maybe you share that. Okay, so this is with pass how. They have a manual, which I can share with you as well. No, okay. just that'd be great so that I can give people who would like to apply for that. You have a manual which is for both both courses that they may development and they may government and public policy. And this mm -hmm. one you just use and the online application form as well. So okay. this is what you want the DA application form, a single letter of motivation for both IR education institutions, including Precise account of your academic, professional, and personal reasons for wishing to participate in the reform. So, just like I wrote my motivational letter by adding what you studied in school and all that you did in school and how it has prepared you to study this program. A gap free curriculum vitae, if 
you are finding difficult is just do the euro pass and you are good to go yeah then basically the same thing then testing your english language skills to at least be true so for us for this program when you come you are supposed to take a foreign language so if you come and being saying that yeah i said it in english and everything to take a foreign language then that means you have to take english c1 or c2 here to get credits for that that's why i wrote my exams in spanish yesterday because it's a foreign language no can you explain it again so like uh, apart from your english you have to take a foreign language as part of your program yeah but we can still take the english as the foreign language because okay. germany germany english is a foreign language so okay so why didn't you take german but okay so there are foreign languages any language apart from german you can take german but it's a higher level which okay so um can can we go through the the attention they have put out there yeah please only submit legible copies of your documents that's sometimes when you scan the documents and it has problems mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to be clear like yeah then in case your application is sent to more than two universities or if non-specific priorities are given your application will not be accepted interesting yeah and then see, documents that are not originally in the english or german language have to be handed in with an official english or german translation so maybe those who do not have their certificate in english or german you would have to translate your documents, but if it's in English, that's all. Okay, that's great. So yeah, so this is this is the warning. You have to complete in one session because you can't save. Wow. Yeah, so you need to get everything ready, then complete whilst you start. So this is. This is just how it looks like. It's just right. a template. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, Pascal makes everything simple, you know. I like that. So it's it's just taking you through where what you have to do where and what you don't have to do where. So so as soon as you have clicked on submit application, you should see this message. Your data has been saved. So, so they send you the email and then good luck and all the best. I, I thank thank you very much for taking us through the process. Is there other information in the the DAD brochure you would like us to discuss? Or basically that's about it? Yeah, I think that's that's just about that, but for me, the most important thing is getting your documents ready and yeah. Okay, and, gotcha. and one thing too is, yeah, it's scholarship, but we pay what we call the semester fee. Um, can um from every school. So okay. Depending on the school you are, you are in, you still have to pay the semester fee and it covers for your bars. Or other petty application, other little application stuffs, yeah. Okay, That's so it. like the DAD doesn't cover those semester fee. They will give you the right. money, and you would have to pay yeah, for you that. Have to pay. Yeah. Okay. And for the money for the DAD, is it sent directly to you? Like you open an account and it's sent to you, or it's sent to the school and it's disbursed to you? How the, how do you get the money? No, it's your money. It's sent into your account. Is it every month or you get a full amount at a go? Every month. Every month. Okay. okay. No, no dead parties. The only okay. dead party is your bank account. So okay. let's just pass out. Are you done or you want us to continue? Yeah, I think basically that's that's just okay. So before you continue, can you highlight like what the scholarship entails? what do you get like what's the package okay there's a language a language course okay a paid language course 
a paid language course. Okay. But due to Corona, things are changing and now they are doing it online. Okay. Yeah, but you don't pay anything for it, just that you might not get stipends if you are not doing it in Germany. Okay. Okay, I yeah. get you. Then you get your monthly stipends which changes yearly. Okay. Based on the cost of living of Germany. And then you have research allowance every year and then a paid fare for your travel. That's oh. it's it's a flat rate. It's not based on amount the amount you spend. It's a flat rate it's based on their own calculation and where you are coming from. Okay. So like for you, how much did you get? Are you okay with sharing? Because I'm sure if you look online, we'll be able to find that information. Yeah, I had for me I had seven I think seven fifty euros. So that's okay. that means it's left for me to either buy a ticket which is either more or less or equal to seven fifty. So Okay. So that's your flight to for your flight from Ghana to Germany, you are giving yeah. 750 euros. And how much is the monthly stipend? 861 euros. 861 euros. And like you also be paid, you also be given a flight back home. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. And you talked about uh, research allowance. Is it for everybody or you have to be doing research before you get that? It's for everybody. Okay. How much is that research allowance? 500 euros. Okay. That's great. Okay. So, uh, so basically, this is what the scholarship entails. There's actually, um, thank you very much, Imano, for agreeing to do this. Um, I think maybe the time, like, and this scholarship is every year. So if you can't apply even for this year, I suggest you take your time and go through the procedure and prepare yourself very well for, for next year because it really entails a lot. All you need to do is to show your body and... Um, everything is taken care of. So, Imano, thank you for doing this with us. You're uh, welcome. Leave in the comment section if you do have any comments, if you also do have any advice during the application process for a DAD scholarship, I would love that you share you share with us and with others. And if you've not subscribed, do want to subscribe. It will mean quite a lot to me. Until we meet again.